We are live. Hello, John. Hello, Anne. We're going to let this. Hello, Michael. Hello, Dave. Got uh, some folks showing up to be with us tonight. Hey there. Thank you for the applause. <laughs> You're too kind. Hello, Mr. Yunt. Good to see you. Good to hear from you this evening. Kyle, good for you. <laughs> My dishes are still in the sink, I have to admit. <laughs> Hope you all had a nice weekend. Hello, Mr. York. Welcome to Military Images Live. Going to give it another minute before we get going in tonight's episode. Sure, we'll have some other folks join us along the way. Oh, I'm getting some multiple applause now. Thank you from the home front. Appreciate that. Coming to you live from Arlington, Virginia. The uh, 1861, the inside the defenses of Washington. More folks showing up. We'll give you another minute. Oh, our good friend Rich Jan from Paramus, New Jersey is here. Rich, I hope you're doing well. You owe me a crumb cake, my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much. Got more folks showing up. Thank you, Doug, for the comments on the background. I heard what you said. Thomas Smith, welcome. Thank you all. I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Hello, Liz, hope you're doing well tonight. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, and uh, I'd like to begin more or less where we left, where we began last week, which was with Civil War Photo Sleuth, our new uh, application that uh, is using face, face recognition data and the community, all of you, to identify photographs. Last week I talked about the launch, I talked about some of the success stories that we've had in identifying images. Well, I won't go into more of those great stories, although they're out there, new identifications are happening every day. What I wanna talk about is two interesting stories that have come to my attention that I wanna share with you, especially if you're a collector, because both of them involve how collectors have been using this tool to be able to help them in their collecting. So the first story comes with a gentleman who's a collector. He's interested in a specific regiment and he purchased an image from a dealer that was, and the image was identified to this regiment. So the image was then put through the Civil War Photo Sleuth technology and lo and behold, we found out that it was not a member of that regiment, it was actually from another regiment. And, uh, and so the collector, because it was not the regiment he was interested in, he was able to return the image and get a full refund. So that's uh, perhaps not a surprise to me because I imagined it would be used in numerous ways, but still, it's quite interesting that it was used in that way. The other story happened on Facebook when very recently, when an image was put up for sale uh, and it was sold very quickly, and the person who bought it had actually run the image to Civil War Photo Sleuth and identified it. Keep in mind, the image was posted on Facebook as an unidentified soldier, and this person was able to come up with a proof positive 100% ID and made the purchase. So if you're a collector, there's a couple things for you to consider. Now, on to our next story. I wanna ask you, what did you have for lunch today? Well, where did you go for lunch? Did you go out? I didn't. I sat at my desk, and I hope you're not listening, uh, Anne and my mom, because I had potato chips, I had a piece of cake and a bottle of water uh, at my desk, not the best lunch. Last week, Chris Magwick, I think his, his name is pronounced, um, he went to a store near his house, uh, did a little shopping on his lunch hour. You may have seen this one on Facebook. 
And uh, this is what he had for lunch. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best Confederate images I've seen come out in a long, long time. Uh, you may have seen this one posted on Facebook. We'll be looking at this image a little closer in a future, future issue of the magazine. Um, even more interesting was a post from Jeff Jambrone showing this image, which was published in his book, uh, Remembering Mississippi's Confederates. And um, here's the caption. I want to read it to you. It says, this early war image depicts three members of the New Albany Grays, Company K, 21st Mississippi Infantry. In the center is James Blackwell. On the right is his brother, Nicholas Blackwell. The soldier on the left is not identified, but maybe John Calvin Pruitt, the stepbrother of James and Nicholas. And this particular image comes from the Union County Heritage Museum. So I wanted to show it to you tonight, both of these images. Let's see if we can get them here for you. Get a sense of both of them together. Uh, one thing that I found particularly interesting is you've got one image with three soldiers, one image with four. This is a great example of where a group of soldiers walked into their local photographer studio and had probably several photos made. You've got a group of three, a group of four. Are there groups of two? Is there a group, various groups of one out there? Um, I hope the next time you have lunch, you'll be able to find them. So let's move on. I couldn't resist showing this image. Speaking of Confederates, uh, this comes from Doug York over at Civil War Faces and Civil War Faces Marketplace. Uh, I'm really quite taken with this image. Comes out of North Carolina, not really sure if they're North Carolina Confederates. We think they're probably not. But what really makes this image of interest, if you look down towards the bottom, you will see uh, the young man has his hand on the end of a tube of a miniature cannon. Can you see that? I'm gonna bring it up a little closer for you to see. Go, see what's going on there? Now, of equal interest is the gentleman, the older gentleman on the other side here. He is holding something in his hand and he's pointing to it. Well, Doug and I were trading emails this morning trying to understand what was what was going on there. We had a couple theories. Did we think that the one gentleman had a primer in his hand? Um, we weren't quite sure. Is it possible that they're acting out some sort of sequence in firing a cannon? Was this cannon used for some sort of educational purposes or training? All this are ideas that were kicking around. We weren't quite sure. So um, I was uh, getting curious for answers, and I thought, let me reach out to one guy who really probably knows, and that's Jack Melton, who many of you know as the editor of the Artillerist magazine and also, also of Civil War News. Jack promptly responded, and here's what he says. There is a small model cannon in the foreground, and it looks like the soldier on the left is holding a rammer. The end goes past his thumb. The soldier on the right has his thumb over the vent just like if you were sponging the cannon. So these two guys are acting out a scene, um, an artillerist scene, and um, understanding quite why they were doing it. Um, we're, I'm assuming they were both part of an artillery battery. Certainly their uniforms suggest that, but they wanted us to, they wanted to tell us a story. They wanted to share with us um, something about their military experience. And here we have a preserved for all time. Thank you for sharing that, Doug. I have another one here. This one's also from Doug. I picked this off of some of our faces last week. Here we go. All right. Now, for those of you who know your photography and your formats, you'll instantly recognize this as a cabinet card photograph. These cabinet cards were popular beginning uh, soon after the Civil War, they come into existence around 1866. 
and they're made all the way into the early 1900s. So they have a long lifespan. They're roughly five by seven inches, um, and they all have similar um, characteristics. You have the print area, you have the mount, and the photographer's name is usually on the bottom of the mount and also, of course, on the back. What we have here are two soldiers. They've got their revolvers, uh, and um, they've got some pretty good beards as well. So uh, Doug did some reaching out to try to find out more about this image. And um, what he learned is that, in fact, the original of the image still exists. And here it is. Voila. So uh, the original tintype uh, belongs to Matthew Underwood. And uh, there it is. So side by side, you've got the original over here. And then you've got a copy. I wanted to show this to you for another reason beyond uh, Doug's photo sleuthing to find this out. I wanted to talk a minute about why this image is also significant. Let's think about when it was made, probably in the 1880s. By that time, one or both of these gentlemen may have been married, they may have had a wife, they may have had children, they may have been attending veterans reunions. Wherever they were in life, they had a circle of friends, they had some circle of family, and it's very, very likely that they wanted to make copies of their original hard plate image that they could share with their friends. Remember, these images are one of a kind and they're single. So they probably took it over to the local photographer studio and had this image made. So you've got an image here that is significant because they wanted to share it with somebody, whether it was friends, whether it was family, they wanted to share it. So uh, this uh, time period is a very common period to have these copy photos made. Now, you'll see this again happening around the 1910s and again in probably around the 1930s. And those two time periods are important too. In the 1910s, you're looking at the 50th anniversary of the Civil War. So you see another round of copy photos being made. And then again, in the 1930s, you're seeing them again and think about the reason why. By that time, they have grandchildren, they have great grandchildren, and they're realizing that their time on earth is limited and they're making one final round of copies to distribute to friends and family. So it's important to think about these photographs in a continuum and think about the different formats as they evolved over time. So there you go. Speaking of images evolving over time, we've got this story. For those of you who saw the um, autumn 2017 issue of Military Images, you may recall this image. The gentleman on the side is named George Fisher, and um, he was born in Pennsylvania, um, resided in Hagerstown, Maryland, served throughout the Civil War. He stayed in the Army, uh, in the local militia. added a mustache and some sideburns, posed for this image. He stayed in the Army into the 1880s, the 1890s. Here he is again, a bit of an older man now, in the 1890s, around 1900, had service in the Spanish-American War. Also, very involved with the Grand Army of the Republic. There he is again, um, uh, and he goes all the way up. He remains in the service all the way into World War I. So 50 years of service in the US military. Now, when we published the article, one thing we didn't have was an image of him in his World War I uniform. And as sometimes will happen, once we publish, we learn more, we find more images, and we find more information. So very recently, we found this gentleman, George Fisher, in his World War I outfit. So 
In fact, we found a couple of them. Here's a great one. Ah. All right. You can see Mr. Fisher all in the background, standing with the stars and the stripes in front of a tank. And if, as if that weren't enough, here's another one. It doesn't get much better than that, I think, if you're a World War I collector uh, and if you're a Civil War collector who has the uh, opportunity to trace a soldier through 50 years of his life and his service. So I love when these sorts of stories happened. This image, in fact, is owned by one of the descendants of the Fisher family. And um, there's a bunch more images. I don't have time to show them all to you tonight, but work on Mr. Fisher continues, and we're excited to share his World War II image here, which sort of concludes our look at George Fisher's life. But don't go away, there's more. Got a couple more things to show you. Uh, part, of the, um, part of the week, the weekend was actually another road trip for me. Uh, last week, you may recall, I shared a bunch of images of Lookout Mountain. I'd taken a weekend trip and done a lot of scanning. I don't know if I told you how many images I made, but it was in excess of 60, if I recall. Um, this weekend, I had another road trip. I was in the car for a good chunk of the weekend. Um, while other folks were uh, heading out for a little bit of sun, I was uh, in the car. But it was great because I knew that I was going to be seeing a wonderful collection. You'll be seeing representative examples of that collection this winter. But uh, I had a marathon scanning session on Saturday and um, made approximately 110 scans uh, of images. So I wanted to show you a couple of the gems that I found along the way. This is a pair. My guess is that this was probably done for a sanitary commission or sanitary fair. Um, those of you who are familiar with philanthropic photographs will recognize some common themes. These sorts of images, like the carts de visite that you see here, uh, they were sold in fairly large quantities at fairs that were held, in this case, around the north in the big cities, but in some smaller towns too. The whole idea was to raise money for soldier supplies, for soldier care. Uh, the U.S. Sanitary Commission, the U.S. Christian Commission were two very large organizations. So my guess is that this is where, where this came from. I've seen these images before, uh, one at a time. I've never seen them both together, and to tell you the truth, I'm not quite sure that I even knew that they were different. At least there's some subtle differences going on here. Uh, on this, this image over here, you can see uh, it appears to be uh, Lady Liberty holding the shield and holding the flag. She uh, is looking down towards a young lady who is lifting uh, a crown, a uh, classic victory crown. And um, she's uh, handing or gesturing towards Lady Liberty. In the other image, you've got, sort of looks like the deed has been done, where the crown has now been placed on the head of this very noble soldier. So I came away from this, these two images thinking, oh, that's really kind of neat. It's a, um, a symbol of victory, perhaps a, a signal or a symbol of triumph. And then I chuckled when I thought, well, guess what? What happens if you actually reverse those images? Um, it looks like they're actually ordering the crown to be removed in shame uh, uh, for the soldier. So I seriously doubt that's the case. Um, but, and I'm not sure that anyone ever thought about that when the photographs were being made, but I thought if you flip them around, it tells quite a different story. Um, my point here is not to make fun of the photographer or poke fun at the individuals, but just to tell you that you've got collections of images here that you can think about as stories. 
because this is oftentimes how individuals thought about that. Uh, they thought about storytelling. They were storytellers, much as you and I are. And uh, these images, these two images in particular together, tell a story. Was there a third image? Was there a fourth image? Is there a series of images? I don't know. Uh, maybe you do. Maybe you've seen them. And if you have, I would love to know about it. Here's one. My immediate reaction, and I think I said it out loud, a Confederate with a Henry rifle. Uh, how often do you see that? Uh, a pretty rare view. Uh, no identification on the soldier, uh, but he's got all regulation equipment on. Um, uh, he's got his knee-high boots, and he's resting a hand on the muzzle of that Henry rifle. So, and of course he has a classic sort of a, a civilian hat um, that is uh, resting on top of his head, sort of a nod to his individual individuality. So a really great image, we'll be talking more about that. So if you have any other Confederates, if you've got a Confederate with a Henry rifle, I would love to know about that. So another cool image that I would share with you is uh, this one. Don't know much about it, but I think it's a nice nod to a um, to a soldier and uh, and what I assume is the sun holding the stars and stripes. Uh, perhaps some sort of a militia soldier, perhaps right up uh, around 1861, maybe just before the war begins. Uh, but um, I want to point out, especially the tinting. For those of you who know Civil War photography know that uh, tinted images vary in terms of quality, but behind it were men and women who wanted to have color on those images. They wanted to bring them to life beyond the limits of black and white photography as much as we do today. So um, what you have here is a great example of the tinting. And although this copy print sitting on my stand right now really doesn't show it, the level of detail uh, the the tinted plumage in his helmet. It's like a, some sort of a bearskin helmet. Um, the yellow gauntlets, the red, white, and blue on the flag, little details of red in the young man who has a uh, sort of a riff on a zouave style. Got that going on. All the little detailing, the reds, the blues, the grays, uh, sky blue in his uniform. It's particularly well done. This is a larger image, it's an albumin, and um, you can bet that this soldier spent some extra money to get all this work done. It's a really, really great example. Um, and while we're on the topic of color, got this image to show you. This is really quite interesting. Um, you may have seen examples like this before. We're accustomed to seeing images more along the lines of the one I just showed you, um, where you've got uh, the tinting is beautifully done, but it sort of lets the photography be the hero. In this case, you've got some very heavy um, painting on top of the photograph. And make no mistake about it, this is a photograph. You can see the detail, the very realistic details in the faces, the proportions of their bodies. Uh, all of this uh, is, is definitely um, from a photograph. My theory is that this photograph was made in a studio and uh, there was a, a simple floor, there was a canvas backdrop, and the artist who got a hold of this actually used his or her imagination and created really this painterly scene, a military scene, added the fence, added the tree, added the camp in the back. Um, perhaps the depiction here is uh, guys going out um, to be snipers or some sort of a skirmish line. Not quite sure of the story here, but clearly you've got some men who are in action and some really nice work done. So I wanted to share this with you because it gets a little bit more into the artistry. Uh, this image tilts to more of the artist side of thing, the painterly quality, the quality of the tinting and the color uh, really kind of brings it closer to a, a painting, 
almost than it does a photograph. So you see these images out there and um, don't discount them because they're really quite beautiful works of art by themselves. And this one, like the one previously, is an albumin photo. It's a larger size, a larger format, um, probably around eight by 10, if I recall. So uh, you'll be learning more about this one too um, in the winter issue. I wanna to close tonight. I'm gonna to go back to uh, an untinted photograph. And um, uh, this image is striking to me in a few different ways. One of them is you have a couple of private soldiers. These are not ranking officers. These are enlisted men that are in the ranks. If you look closely, I know you don't really have the benefit of that because of the video, but you look closely, you can see what appears to be a little bit of shadow on those cheeks for these guys. Um, you can see the heavy overcoats, uh, the dress, the boots are definitely dirty. Um, they're standing on a hardwood floor with a canvas backdrop. So just in terms of a period image, it's got a lot going for it. I should also mention, it's a very casual pose. Uh, the gentleman uh, over on this side has got his arm resting on a shoulder of his buddy. His buddy is sort of leaning back. He's got one foot forward. Uh, they're very casual about their pose. That's a little unusual. Um, uh, those of you who are collectors uh, appreciate these poses. Uh, of course, you also have the very stiff stiffly posed soldiers, this is much more relaxed. What really makes this image for me is what's written on the back. And you can see just a little bit here. I'm gonna read it for you. Uh, it says, um, uh, just in off picket, 48 hour tour. So I love that. These guys were out for two days on picket duty. Don't know where they are. Got some names written here on pencil. We've got some work to do to figure out who they are. Um, but this photo was made, um, or pardon me, this photo was scanned on Saturday. So we've got some work to do to figure out more about these guys. And maybe, just maybe, we can come a little closer to telling you about uh, where they were, what they did, and what became of them. So with this image, I'm gonna leave it here for tonight. Give me a couple of programming notes before we call it an evening. Uh, one of them is I want to mention to you Mike McAfee, who is the longtime uh, author of Uniforms in History, one of our oldest or longest standing departments in Military Images Magazine. Mike is a curator at the West Point Museum. He's well known, perhaps to many of you. His name has certainly appeared in numerous publications. Uh, and he's been, as I mentioned, been writing for us for a long time. Uh, Mike had uh, a pretty serious surgery uh, back the end of July. Uh, he's recovering, it was a good prognosis. Um, uh, we're gonna put his column on hiatus, um, this issue. It's Mike's column. Uh, he deserves to get back into it when he's ready. So um, Mike tells me that um, he's hoping to have a column in the winter issue. We'll be back in full swing. So your thoughts and prayers for Mike would be much appreciated because I know many of you are fans of his column. So don't despair. Mike has every, uh, uh, every intention to be back in our winter issue. Last thing I'll leave you with is another programming note. Um, we're going to take a break from Military Images Live, take the next two weeks off, uh, but we'll be back with a new set of episodes in September. So I really want to thank all of you for watching. This has been, uh, it's been great. Your support has been wonderful. Your comments have been wonderful. And um, we're going to keep talking about Civil War photography. Thanks to you. Thanks to the community of collectors and all of you who have an interest, no matter what level of interest you have. I want to thank you so much for watching and paying attention. Keep your ideas coming. Keep your photos coming. I, Keep doing what you do for the community. And um, as we say in the magazine, uh, please continue showcasing, interpreting, and preserving those unusual images. So have a great evening, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Take care, and good night.